Hi, I'm Kendra Winchester and welcome back to my channel and as you saw by the title, today I'm going to be doing my bookshelf tour. I've been really excited to do this but a lot of stuff has gotten in the way but I still have a few things organized as well but we're just going to go for it and so we're going to start it today. It'll be a several part series uh, and just a few things to note before we get into it. So first is I'm not going to name every single book I have in my library. I personally don't enjoy bookshelf tours as much that are like that because it just takes so long. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause on each shelf and tell you about some of my favorites and probably some quirky stories that I can't resist telling about uh, the books and the stories of how I got them and different things. And uh, you can just take a look at the titles that way. Uh, also, I do double stack my bookshelves as you can guess and that is because I just don't have room so if you're concerned for the bookshelves welfare I know I know guys it's, it's out of the books so you know anyway uh, I guess that's it that's it for me and let's get into what you're actually here for the bookshelves <laughs> So the first bookshelf that we have is the Harry Potter bookshelf, which is just the top of the bookshelf. And I have a cat bookend uh, that someone gave me when I was a kid. And obviously these little creatures that someone gave me, as well as a random black tree, which I still don't know why it's up there. But yeah, that's just the Harry Potter collection. So the next bookshelf is my horses and Chronicles of Narnia shelf. Uh, as you can probably guess, like most kids, I went through different stages where I was obsessed with different things. And one of those was definitely horses. First it was cats, as you can probably guess by some of the knickknacks I have on this shelf. Now I maintain the organization on the shelf that I had when I was a kid. So it's not by publisher like my other bookshelves or most of my other bookshelves. It's just by, uh, I guess subject? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So first we have over here, we have the Black Stallion series. These are some vintage editions that uh, my writing teacher gave me. And then I have, of course, Margaret Henry. Can't have a book, a horse book collection without that. And then I have these random Winnie the Horse Stoneler books that I got when I was a kid. And obviously every kid pretty much has Chronicles of Narnia somewhere in their life. I like this edition because it numbers them by publication order and not by... Uh, the actual chronological order because even as a kid I was a super nerd and wanted them in the order that they were originally published in so that's kind of why I have stuck with this you know collection even though it's kind of the worst for wear let's just be honest <laughs> and just in case you didn't think I was serious about the whole horse obsession here's more horse books uh, these are by Terry Farley I don't think they're related this is the Phantom Stallion series I actually didn't finish it uh, but eventually did go into the Island Stallion series. Then we move on to when Horse Kendra met Fantasy Kendra. So what does that make? That makes unicorns. Obviously guys, obviously. Uh, so this one in particular, I would say the Unicorns of Balinor was a big one for me. Sorry guys, I'm not a professional videographer obviously. So, uh, so Unicorns of Balinor, I don't think they are in print anymore. In fact, the third one was not in print when I first started reading them and I read them out of order, which was very tragic. Uh, I hate reading these out of order. I guess I think most people are like that unless it's mysteries or something. Um, I would say my favorite um, Unicorn trilogy would be The Birth of the Firebringer. Uh, I think these are also out of print, but I kept them. I think they're fantastic. Um, for unicorn loving souls. Also, let's talk about this for a second. Middle grade Kendra really loved this book and I love the second book, but do you know what Bruce Coville did? That's right, he waited over a decade to finish the series. He wrote half of it and then made us all grow up and the magic was gone. But I did finish the series, but it just wasn't the same. It wasn't the same guys. But yeah, that this pretty much marks the horse slash unicorn stage of my life. So going down to the next shelf is my Dear America 
uh, series. Now, I only owned about a third of these growing up, but since then I've gone to use bookstores and I found a bunch of them for really uh, inexpensive prices. So I'm still missing about 20, but I found the easy to find ones. I guess now we're getting into the real stuff. But I really love these. These really gave me a love of historical fiction and they actually taught me a lot. And I would read one and I would really love the subject and I would read a lot about it. So for example, um, I really loved the voyage uh, of the Great Titanic. And so I went and I researched a lot about the Titanic. Uh, incidentally, even though I wasn't old enough to watch it, <laughs> this was around the time that Titanic came out. So uh, there were a lot of books about the Titanic coming out. Maybe that heavily influenced my research of it anyway. Uh, but yeah, all of these are great. Some highlights would be, um, I really love this one. This one's about a Jewish girl who escapes uh, Vienna, Austria. And then another one is about a girl who immigrates to Ellis Island. And I eventually did get to go see Ellis Island, which is really cool. And there were several different ones in here that I really loved, but I haven't read most of these since I got them as an adult and I just haven't sat down and read them, but I need to. Uh, there are a lot of different ones that I'm missing still again. So I have a shelf on my Goodreads. Um, I'll link it down below and you can go check it out. Um, I have all the different ones there are. And if you really love these, then you can check them out as well. So while we're here, I'm just going to jump down to the next shelf. Um, to get to the Royal Diaries series. As the name would suggest, this series is about ruling women. It's about women monarchs. So I only actually owned Elizabeth I as a kid, but I read a bunch from the library, like Cleopatra was always a favorite. And since then, I've also picked up a bunch of these. I am missing so many of these. I haven't found nearly as many of these as I found Dear America, but we're still working on it. It's a work in progress and I really enjoy them. My favorites would have to be uh, Maria Antoinette and uh, probably, as I mentioned, Cleopatra. I've always been interested in uh, Egyptian mythology since we studied that as a kid, so that was cool. But yes, definitely would highly recommend these if you have any middle reader girls. So the next shelf is a later middle grade for me, and I have some random books over here in the corner. I have some His Dark Material stuff. Also, I really love the Warrior Cat series until I aged out of it. And of course, I have Inkheart. I listened to the Inkheart audiobook over and over and over as a kid. And then they came out with Ink Spell, which I think I listened to in high school. And then Ink Death came out when I was in college or something. So I did not read it and I still haven't read it. I don't know how it ends. And I know part of me is procrastinating because I don't know, I, I can't say goodbye. I don't want to know how it ends. I also really love The Thief War. That was also good. Um, but yeah, this is basically a, another series self. You can tell I was really fascinated by Cats and Horses, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So this is probably one of the most random shelves I have. <laughs> so this is a bunch of middle reader books that really didn't go anywhere. So we have everything from the American Girl books down on your bottom right to Gregor Lee Overlander, which is Suzanne Collins with the Hunger Games middle reader series over on your far left. So my favorites out of the shelf would be Inside Out and Back Again, and also When You Reach Me, which is over here. And then also, of course, uh, the His Dark Material series, which I own the collected paperback edition, which is the one I had when I was a kid. And as an adult, I found the hardback uh, American editions, and I just need the subtle knife. So on the shelf, we have Little House books, the original ones that I read, and also the box set of the Evie White books. And uh, I love The Trumpet of the Swan. That's my favorite. Also, Susan Cooper's The Darkest Rising series. And that's already an acid trip, but I was sick when I read them, so I don't even remember half of it. Uh, I should probably reread those. I'll put that on my list somewhere. Also, the Garth Nix books, the early ones, the Seventh Tower series. I don't think I ever finished that one either. I should. Um, I don't know why I haven't. And, of course, Peter and the Starcatchers. It's narrated by Jim Dale, who narrates the American Harry Potter audiobooks. So, of course, I had to have those. And in the corner are just some used audiobooks that I have. I don't really know. I think it must have been a library sale from the looks of them. So, again, super, super random shelf. But uh, there are some really good books on it. Last but not least on this children's shelf is my picture book and random shelf. So this one is just all of the stuff I had as a kid and I just threw it all on. And this is the shelf that they got because it was the tallest one and it worked best for them. Uh, there aren't too many uh, exciting things here that I want to show you, but there's definitely a couple here. So this is a book about a little girl a month named May. She goes around to find her dad December. Now December and April were once married, but then they got divorced, but they had May. And 
in addition to teaching me about the months, and I still use these, the, the illustration things today to remember some things about the months, uh, but in addition to that, you also learn about divorce. And as a very little kid, I knew very little about divorce since my parents uh, were still together. And it taught me a lot about that and how to empathize with my good friends who her mom went through a divorce. And so I found this really, really helpful. Of course, I loved uh, Pyramid by David McCauley. I love all of the books that he does. I have Castle, Cathedral, and City. I think he's done a few more, but I'm not exactly sure. But as a kid who loved to build things and uh, loved to you know, fix things. Even today, I'm the misfix of the house. I really love this book because it breaks down how they built things and how they built the pyramid, how they built castles and cathedrals and everything. I thought it was so beautiful. And because I love Egyptian mythology, the pyramid one was always my favorite. So that's it from the children's shelf. Uh, hopefully you didn't get too ill and this one has the really bad lighting but because it's across from the other bookshelves but I hope you enjoyed this tour and that you learned a little bit more about my middle reader slash children section and until the next tour I guess I'll see you in the next one bye guys